it can just make sure that we are okay we're not actually or haven't introduced any bugs uh, and everything builds all right so we can actually see that we've got a bug there because i went and put tile rather than time so we'll do that again and we built it this time okay so that means that we've now got a very simple calculation that gives us a delta value and that delta value is the difference between when this game loop last ran and the time now. And we're gonna use that to make sure that our animations and our timings are always very, very smooth. So the next thing we need to do is we need to have a method that is going to update the logic in our game. So I'm gonna create another method here called update scene. And this method is gonna accept a float and the float is going to be the delta value because obviously we're going to use this delta value in all of the calculations we do around timing. Now, for the moment, we're not doing anything in here, but we'll just put a comment saying update game logic and then we'll close that off. The last thing is this draw view. Now we could just leave draw view as it is, um, but because we've got update scene, I'd rather actually rename this to be something like render scene. Um, so it does make sense to me later on when I come back to it and I have a look at what's going on. So if we highlight this, I'm then gonna use the refactor option in Xcode to rename draw view and I'm going to call it, uh, sorry, render scene instead. Okay, so if I preview that, I can see that I've got a couple of entries here, a couple of changes that are gonna be made in here, which are fine. Um, this here is telling me that draw view is inside that uh, configuration for the timer. And it's not gonna change that itself. It's gonna, I'm gonna to have to go and change that for it. So by doing that, I need to remember to do this, otherwise it won't work. But I'm gonna apply those changes, which makes the name change. And I'm gonna just move down to that start animation scene and we can see here that draw view is still in there. So we want to change that to say render scene. Okay, so that's all we need to do there. So we now have our game loop, which is going to be called, and in fact, I've made a mistake there. You may have just spotted it. We actually don't want it to be a render scene. We want to now change this to say main game loop. Okay, because we want to call the main game loop every time the timer hits rather than the render scene. So going back up, so we can now say we want the main game loop to be run 60 times a second every time the timer hits. And that's going to ask update scene to run and it's also going to ask render scene to run as well. So we need to add, um, once we've calculated the delta there, the calls to those two methods. But before we do that, I just want to add these two method um, signatures into my project. Now, these are purely internal methods to this particular class. They're not gonna be accessed from outside this class. So if we have a look at the top of the template, we can see that there is actually a private interface that has been created as part of the template. And so in here, I could actually put um, the fact, or put my um, signatures so I can actually define them without exposing them to anybody outside. So I'm gonna have update scene, which took a float and it was called Delta and I then have render scene, which doesn't take anything. So just to just to keep things consistent, um, we'll, we'll put that in there. So going back down to our main game loop, in here now what we can do is we can say self because it's actually the current class where these methods exist. And I'm gonna say I want to update scene and it's going to be delta. And it's gonna be self again and I want to render the scene. So. There we have it, very, very straightforward. Main game loop gets called. We work out the timings. We pass the delta into the update scene method, which updates the logic of our entities. We then render the scene, which draws our entities. So this is pretty straightforward stuff, but it's setting us up to have um, a great deal of flexibility and an ease of sort of maintenance, I suppose, as well, to make sure that we can keep the updating of our game separate from the rendering of our game. So we'll just do a quick build on that and see if we get any errors which luckily we don't, so that's actually working. So if we actually try to run this now, we should just get a blank screen. Um, so let's give that a try. And there we go, we just have a blank screen. Not very exciting. Uh, one thing we could do though, is if we stop that and go back to our source code, um, we could actually say, well, let's see if this is working. We wanna make sure everything's being called. So what we'll do is we'll add a call into the um, rendering method 
uh, and the call is going to clear the screen for us. Okay, so what we'll do is in here where we have dra draw game scene, obviously every time we draw a scene, we want to make sure that the last scene is, is erased. Um, otherwise, you'll just get you know the scenes blurring on top of each other. So there's a GL command for that, and it's called GL clear. Okay, and GL clear allows us to um, clear the screen using some different masks. Oh, let me just put that in there like that. So there's GL clear um, just up here, and you'll see it takes a bit field mask. Now these are um, defined for you uh, within OpenGL as constants, so you can just pick them up. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to have one that's called GL. Oops, got lucky there. GL color buffer bit. Okay. Now what that is, that's really saying I want to clear the color buffer, which is where your image is being stored. Okay, the the actual image data is being stored. I want to clear it. Now, when you do clear it, which is erasing the screen in effect, what you are doing is you're also using the GL clear color to clear it in a particular color. So now we're saying clear the screen each time that this render scene is run. If we go back up to our definition up here, we can see that we've defined a clear color, but it's black. Um, but if I change the green to full intensity and we run our project again, This time we can see that the actual screen is being cleared to green. So we're just proving really that the actual render method is being run and we're actually clearing the screen, but this is a bit more obvious because it's being cleared to green. So we'll stop that and we'll put that back to black because we want to actually do it to black. And what we now need to do is we need to add in a couple of methods which are inside the crash landing example because they are going to then allow us to start to draw something to the screen which is going to basically made this a little more exciting than it is at the moment. So now we need to add the classes that are included in the crash landing. Uh, and to do that, what I'll do is I'm gonna create uh, a separate group inside my project where I can keep them um, away from the other code that I'm actually adding. So if I do a uh, new group on here, and I'm gonna call this OpenGL ES support. And this is the name that they're actually using in the crash landing examples as well. Uh, once I've done this, I now need to go and actually uh, bring in those two, or the, the method, it's one method, two files, the header and the, the, the .m file, uh, and bring them into my project. So if I go add and I ask for an existing file, I can see here it takes me into where the tutorial is that we're working on. And if I open up crash landing and look inside classes, these are the two files that we're after. So one called texture2dh and one called texture2dm. So if I add those, and I will tick copy because I want them to be copied into my project, so I'm going to change them later. Um, we're going to extend those classes later on to give us some extra functionality we'll need when we're working with things like sprite sheets um, and working and thinking around things like animation. So I'll add that, and we will then see that we've got the two um, files that we need for Texture2D included. Now at this point, if I actually build uh, our project, we'll see that we get about 18 errors. Um, and the reason for that is that we need to uh, use a framework in here. So if you were to look inside here, and even if you were to look inside the error messages actually, um, which we can do, you'll see that the error messages that are coming up are around CG, um, which is core graphics. So that class is obviously making use of core graphics. And what we haven't got is the core graphic framework imported into our project. So if I right click on frameworks, I can then say add existing framework. Okay, and I can then add the existing framework that I want, which for me would be core graphics. Now, if you want to know where this all is, um, I'll just drop this down here. So I'm going from my um, root drive, if you like, I'm going to developer, platforms, and I'm going into the uh, OS platform, developer and SDKs. Uh, I'm developing on SDK um, on 2.2. .2. Um, if you're still on 2.1, you'll have a 2.1 directory. If you're on 2.2.1, then you could use that as well. But within there, there's system and then library, which is where I am now. And in there, you'll see frameworks under which are all of the frameworks that you can use for that particular SDK. So core graphics is the one that I'm after. So I'm gonna add that to my project, okay and I can see that it's added there. And I'll just do another build, and we can see that the build has succeeded. So we've got rid of those referencing errors 
um, that we had before. 